How to avoid a big bill at your workers' comp audit. Hi, I'm Mordecai with Kickstand Insurance. So in order to understand how you can avoid a big bill at audit, which is gonna come if you have a workers' comp policy, it's probably best to first describe the purpose of an audit and how a workers' comp policy is rated, which means how the underwriters come up with the premium that you need to pay for your workers' compensation insurance coverage. So essentially, workers' compensation insurance policies are based on payroll to your employees. All right, so at the onset of the policy, you provided a projection, an estimate of what you'd be paying your employees for the next 12 months, AKA the policy term. And it is based on that estimate and that projection that the underwriter says, okay, based on your, for example, $100,000 in payroll, your premium will be $5,000, all right? Now, to dig down a little deeper, the way the underwriter calculated that is by asking you, and you provided this information to your independent insurance agent that you're working with, and you said, well, my employees are working as you know, one office person and two out in the field doing landscaping work. And the underwriter then calculated based on the kind of work the employee is doing, $30,000 say to the clerical employee, $70,000 to the employees doing landscaping based on their particular rates per $100 of payroll, this is what your annual premium will be. Now that we've established how a workers' comp policy is rated and how the premium is calculated, let's dig into the workers' comp audit. You see, I just mentioned that your premium is based on the projected payroll. The purpose of the audit now is to look back at policy expiration on the last 12 months of the policy and see, all right, let's actually analyze and see what actual payroll was. If you had an amazing year and you're, you hired two new guys during the, the workers comp policy term, and now your payroll ultimately was $150,000, you added $50,000 in payroll for those working in the field, you will have a bill at audit because your payroll was higher than you projected. So let's discuss a few ways as to how you can avoid this large bill at audit. So number one, when you're making this projection and you're thinking about what you're gonna pay your employees over the next 12 months, it may be wise to overestimate a little bit. Now, if you can manage that as far as cash flow is concerned, yes, that will mean your premium will be a little higher every month during the policy term. However, the good part about doing that is when the auditor does the audit at policy expiration or cancellation, by the way, if the policy cancels midterm, an audit is performed then as well for the time and the period that the policy was in force. So it may be wise, like I was saying, to overestimate so that at audit, you actually receive a refund if your payroll wasn't as high as you initially projected and estimated. That's one way that you can save and avoid getting a large workers' comp audit bill, all right? Another way to, uh, sit, to avoid a large audit bill is to actually examine your books and your payroll and be conscious of this throughout the policy term. And what I mean is as follows. Say, going back to our example, you're projecting $100,000 in payroll and four or five months into the policy term, you hire two people. Let your insurance agent know that you're adding payroll. And that way, the insurance agent can in turn share that information with the insurance company and change your projections. So yes, your monthly premium may go up, but you're paying that additional premium over time versus paying for that additional premium at audit. Another way is, and this is always smart, is to always keep the certificates of insurance that your subcontractors provide you with. Now, let's take a step back for a second. What I'm talking about is, say again, landscaping company, for example, is has two or three employees, but they also sub out some work, for example, for irrigation work or other related 
kind of work, which they don't personally do, that business themselves don't do it, but they hire subcontractors for. So those subcontractors, you're gonna pay them to do the work that you're hiring them to do. Best case scenario is for them to provide certificates of insurance with accurate and enforce workers' comp policies showing that they carry their own workers' comp. In the event that they don't provide that to you, then the auditor may require you to include the payroll you paid them in your policy because essentially you are going to be liable if an injury were to occur to any of those subcontractors. So it would be wise, and this is a great way to avoid a large bill at audit, is to collect those certificates of insurance before work begins and keep them handy and keep them in a place where you can share them with the auditor at audit. Additionally, keep great payroll records, and that is to your employees. Keep great records about your tax documents because auditors will ask for those at audit. And having your profit and loss statement, your general ledger, any records about payroll to your employees and the kind of work they're doing will help you avoid a large audit. I mentioned the kind of work that they're doing because one of the items the auditor looks at is, all right, you had an employee, Bob, which you classified as somebody working out in the field or vice versa. You may have classified them as somebody working in the office and ultimately they decided to go work out in the field and then all that payroll that you're paying, Bob, is now allocated to the higher rate of field work in a landscaping business, for example.